Welcome to lesson 11.1 and 11.2 for honors geometry. Today we're going to start chapter 11, which talks about area of polygons. And the first couple of slides that we're going to go over are a lot of information that you already know, but we're just going to state it in a theorem. So the first theorem or postulate is postulate 24, which is the area of a square postulate. This postulate simply states that the area of a square is the length of its side squared or the square of the length of its side. So if we have a square over here and we know that it has a side length of S, with a square we know it's unique because both sides or all four sides are congruent. The area is going to equal the side squared. So with that postulate, we also have an area congruence postulate, which is postulate 25. This postulate states that if two polygons are congruent, then they have the same area. And that would make sense because if they're congruent, that means they have the same angle measures, the same side lengths. So everything about them is same. So therefore, the area is also going to be same if you have two polygons that are congruent. Okay, moving on to the next postulate. Postulate 26. This is the area addition postulate. And this states that the area of a region is the sum of the area of its overlapping, non-overlapping parts. So let's take a look at our square again. We've now divided it into two parts, two different triangles. Let's say that we have triangle over here that has an area of five. And that this triangle also has an area of five. What this postulate is saying is that the area of the square is going to be the sum of the non-overlapping parts. And we know the area of all of the non-overlapping parts, so the area of this square would have an area of five plus five, which is 10. And that's all that postulate is saying, is that if you were to add up all of the non-overlapping parts of the area, and you can add those up, then you have the area of that particular polygon as well. Okay, like I said, we're going to be moving pretty quickly through these because these are areas and formulas that you've had in the past just in either a postulate or a theorem form. So moving on to the next slide, we've got more theorems about area. The first theorem is about the area of a rectangle. And this theorem states that the area of a rectangle is a product of its base and its height. And in the past, you may have known it as length or length times width, but we're going to refer to the long part right here or the bottom part of this rectangle as its base and the height is this length right here. So the area is going to be base times height. The next figure that we have is a parallelogram. Now this one's a little bit different. We've got the same formula as a rectangle where it's the base times the height but we have to figure out the height of a parallelogram. And remember, in order to find the height of any type of polygon, you're going to have to draw its altitude. So if we were to draw this segment right here straight down and make it form a right angle with its base, this would be the height of your parallelogram. And this length right here would be the base. So when we say that the area of a parallelogram is its base times its height, we actually mean that it's this height right here, the height of the parallelogram, not the length of its side. Okay, the last figure on this is the area of a triangle, and I know that you guys are familiar with this, so we're not going to spend too much time. But the area of a triangle is going to be one half of the corresponding height and base of that triangle. And remember, again, you're going to have to find the height of a triangle, which means you take it from one vertex, and you would find the height by drawing the perpendicular line down to one of its sides. So this would be your height of your triangle, and then this would be its corresponding base. So its area would be one half base times height. Okay, so I know I went through those last theorems and postulates pretty quickly, but they should be review. Now we're going to move on to a few polygons that you may not be as familiar with. So now we're going to learn about the area of trapezoids, rhombuses, and kites. So the first one, a trapezoid. This theorem states that the area of a trapezoid is one half the product of the height and the sum of the lengths of the bases. Okay. 
So we're gonna label up this tri or this trapezoid. First things first, we've gotta label its height. So remember, the height is always going to be the perpendicular line down. And on a trapezoid, it's gonna be from one base down to the other base. This will be your height. And then we're gonna label our bases. So this will be base one, and the bottom one will be base two. So the area of this trapezoid is one half the height times the sum of base one plus base two. That's how we're gonna get that area. All right, now we're gonna move on to a rhombus. Now a rhombus is just a special type of parallelogram. It's a type of parallelogram that has all four sides congruent. But we can find the area of a rhombus if we know it's diagonals. So if we happen to know that this length right here, we'll call this D1, and we have the length of the second diagonal here, D2, we'll call that D2, the area of the rhombus is one half D1 times D2. So it's one half of the product of the length of the diagonals. The last area that we're gonna learn today is the area of a kite. And the area of a kite is just like the area of a rhombus. It is the exact same. It is going to be the product, one half of the product of the lengths of its diagonals. And we draw those diagonals from vertex, opposite vertex to opposite vertex. So those are the two diagonals, D1 and D2. And its area will be one half of the product of the diagonals. Okay. So that's it for our formulas. Now we're just gonna go into a couple of examples for this lesson. So the first example that we have is we need to find the area of the following polygon. And as we can see, it's made of two recognizable shapes, a triangle and a rectangle. So let's figure out the area of each of those shapes so that way we can figure out the area of the polygon. So they give us the height of our triangle and we actually can figure out its base because we know that this length right here is 17 and a rectangle's opposite sides are congruent. So this side up here is also 17. So the area of the triangle is gonna be one half our base, which is 17, times our height, which is five. And when you multiply this out, you end up getting 42.5 units squared. Now we're gonna figure out our area of our rectangle. And that's just our base times the height. So it's gonna be 17, times eight, and that equals 136 units squared. So to figure out the total area of this polygon, we're now going to add these two together. So 42.5 plus 136 gives us 178.5 units squared. Okay, so now let's go ahead and clear that off and move on to the next example. So this one's a little bit more complex. We have a parallelogram attached to a rhombus. We know that this is a rhombus because all four sides are marked congruent. We don't know that it's a square. So we have to treat it as a rhombus. Okay, so we're gonna first find our area of our parallelogram. And that means we have to know the base and the height. And remember, we're gonna find the height, and let me change my pin color here. We're gonna find the height by drawing a line from one vertex perpendicularly down to the base. So if we were to extend this base out right here, draw it perpendicular, it would be this height right here. So because these two segments right here are marked as congruent, we know that this is also has a length of four. And we have our hypotenuse here, which is five. We've got a right triangle. So using our properties of special right triangles, we know that this height equals three. So now that we have the height and we know the base is four, we know our parallelogram, which our formula for area is base times height, is gonna be three times four. So its area equals 12 three times four, 12 units squared. Now we gotta figure out our area of our rhombus. And remember our rhombus area was one half times the product of the two diagonals. So 
So we know now that our height was 3, and the properties of a parallelogram is that they bisect, the diagonals bisect each other. So that means that the first diagonal has a length of 3 plus 3, which is 6. Our second diagonal, which is this line right here, is going to have a length of 4 plus 4. So D2 equals 8. So our area of our rhombus is going to be 1 half 6 times 8. And that equals 24. So now that we've got the two areas of our two separate polygons, or figures here, we can add them together and figure out our total area. So our total area, we're going to label that as TA, equals our area of our polygon, or our parallelogram, which was 12, plus our area of our rhombus, which was 24, and this equals 36 units squared. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.